This week on Crossfeed, Gail's drilling over the Apple iPad. Here we're doing religious oh, news. <laughs> this is religious <laughs> news. I forgot. All right. Uh, the Jesus rifle. When is a baby not a baby? Muslim ringtone. Proposition 8 revisited. And the resurrection movie. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Crossfeed Religious News. I am Pastor Dale Critchley, pastor of Shepherd of the Ridge Lutheran Church in North Ridge, Ohio, near Cleveland. I am Pastor Jim Butler, pastor of St. Luke's Lutheran Church near Boston. So welcome, everybody. Good to have you here. Um, yeah, Dale's been drooling over the the, uh, the the iPads since yesterday. Yeah, I... Uh, um... I I think it'll be good for uh, for for like traveling. It, it's a good media viewer. Uh, not so much with as far as data entry though. So unless you get the optional keyboard, but then at that point you might as well just get a laptop. So don't get technical with me. Yeah, I um I would personally wasn't too impressed. We'll we'll see what happens as time goes on, but. Um, seemed kind of a I don't know strange thing to me. I want one for Bible class though. Just for okay. like, so if there's a question, I can use the, um, you know, Bible software on it and really quick, you know, look something up. That would be convenient. So, but do you think that they inscribed it with the Jesus Bible codes? You homo sapiens and your guns. Are we still on? I, yeah. Okay, you froze for a second there. <laughs> okay. So, okay. You know what I really need on this, though? Secret codes. Yeah, you gotta look. You gotta look around the edge there for the secret Steve Jobs code. <laughs> um, this is an interesting story. Um, <clears throat> I think that's kind of bizarre, actually. Uh, there is this uh, company up in Michigan called uh, Tridecon, and it has a uh, six hundred and sixty million dollar multi year contract to provide eight hundred thousand sites on high powered rifles for um, the Marines, U.S. Marine Corps, and also for the U.S. Army. So, I mean, these are obviously extremely important because, um, you know, this is what the, they, they see through so they can, you know, kill these people. Uh, that's what our soldiers do. And um, <clears throat> so every one of them, of course, obviously has a um, serial number on it. For example, ACO64X32. Well, at the end of these uh, uh, serial, uh, 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 serial numbers, they have Bible verses. So the one I read you continues, 4X32JN8,12, John 8,12. I have no idea what that meant. Um, Don't lecture me about war. And uh, 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 some people are quite upset with this. Apparently the company's been doing this for a long time. Um, but the military's rules say that, you know, you can't proselytize any religion in Iraq and, or, and, and I don't know. I personally read this, I think it's kind of silly. Uh-huh. Right, how many people, first off, I think it's silly to do it. Second, I think it's silly to get upset about it. I mean, how many people spend the time really looking at serial codes, serial numbers? Yeah. And then, and the other thing is, you'd have to, You'd have to recognize it because it's right in the 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 code of the number. You know, it could just be random until somebody noticed the pattern. I mean, you'd have to be looking at multiple serial numbers to notice this, and then you know, then you have to actually figure. Oh, that's a Bible passage, okay? And it's not like it says Corinthians. It just says two C O R. You know, um, four colon six. Which is, you know, right at the end of the, of the thing. So if, you know, if you didn't know that, that that's an abbreviation for a biblical book, you'd have no idea. Right. Um, you know, and, and frankly, you know, soldiers are, are, are they, they clean their gun. They really don't have time to go playing uh, looking at serial numbers. So, I, I mean, this company says they've been doing it for some time. Uh, but I just don't think it's a, a, I don't know, I think it's silly to do it. Um, yeah, so the, the, the sub headline says, 
Pentagon's Applier for Rifles says says it's always added New Testament references. Um, I just, I don't know. Well, it, I mean, it, it certainly sends a weird message about, you know, um, you know, the, the grace of God and stuff. And, and Yeah, grace of God, <laughs> kill um, Well, maybe these could be good, though. You know, remember the church down in Texas that gave away the guns? <laughs> yes. <laughs> They give away just the sights. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, this, 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 I almost want to put under, you know, with the uh, uh, the Wittenberg door. Truth is stranger than fiction, you know. Yeah. Or, or there, you know, weird Jesus stuff, you know. Here, you know, that you find in bookstores. Here it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But maybe our buddy there in Texas could, you know, give away the gun with the Jesus I say, you know, right, high powered rifle sight on it. You, you go into the Christian bookstore and you've got your books, you got your Bibles. You got your precious moments, you know, and your nativity scenes and your veggie tale stuff and your ammunition and your, you know, your munitions, you know. <laughs> right. You know, uh, uh, you know, the civilian model of the AK-47 with the Jesus, uh, uh, you know, sight on it, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> but, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, at the same time to get upset about it, I mean, you actually have to be looking for it, you know, and then you'd have to go actually and find a Bible. And and look these passages up, you know. Right. <laughs> like, I mean, the only thing that I can see about this that uh, that's really causing any kind of a problem is that because the um, the, the the Taliban, the Al Qaeda, um, you know, they're they keep saying, well, this is really this is the Christians against the Muslims, right? Which is ridiculous, but that's their propaganda. All right. Well, when the when the guns have New Testament Bible passages on it, this is just fodder for them to go see, see. That's right. They should put verses from the Quran on there. Yep. <laughs> That'd be better. I you know I I, I, I have to kind of laugh at this article. U.S. military rules specifically prohibit the proselytizing of any religion in Iraq or Afghanistan. Well, I don't know if this is what I call proselytizing. <laughs> Isn't that what your evangelism program there is in Dedham? <laughs> you, you, you imprint Bible, you know, obscure or, uh, you know, hard to find references to Bible passages on guns. <laughs> distribute them through your community, hoping that somebody's <laughs> going to, you know, do the research and be saved. <laughs> now, this, is, this is my idea of stealth evangelism, you know. <laughs> Um, that's, it's powerful though. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, can't get much more powerful than uh, 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 uh. you know what they need. No, you know what would be good? Bible verses on ringtones. See, there you go. You talk about printing the Quran on there. See, yeah, now. talk talk about uh, you know evangel stealth evangelism. Uh, this is just a real short little article. But um, uh, it says that, yeah, in, e in Egypt, uh, uh, verses from the Quran as cell phone ringtones are getting very, very popular. Very nice to admit you. Are they sung? I mean, it doesn't say. Um, it just says that, well, you could have spoken speech as your, uh, um, you know, I mean, what's what's preventing anybody from yeah. going on, you know, on to... Yeah, you know, those, those those people out there with iPhones, you know, can go on to, uh, you know, download something onto iTunes and cut it and make it a ringtone. Sure. Yeah, well, you, yeah. Have... you know, I've heard different comedians and stuff like that that, that do ringtones and stuff. Yeah. So, um, you know, but the um, um, Mufti Ali Goma, apologize for, I'm sure I mispronounced that, um, said that using the verses as ringtones trivializes the sanctity of the Quran and said that they should use religious songs instead. No, ma'am. We're musicians. I don't know. This sort of reminds me of a, of a, a Jewish, um, 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 uh, what do you call those things? I'm drawing a... Phylactery. Yeah, phylactery. There you go. Um, you know, where you, you take a verse and, and you wrap it up in, in leather... Uh, except this is actually better than that because it's, you're actually hearing it. So, right. but you got to understand how how my understanding how Islam looks at the Quran. And by the way, if somebody wants, if I don't have this correct, uh, please correct me. Um, 
at podcast at crossfeednews.com. Uh, you know, it would be, be welcome to a correction here. But my understanding is that the Quran is, in Islam, really what Jesus is to us, the, the embodiment of God's Word, uh, and that it's an exact replica of a book that's in, in heaven. And so, with that in their mind, that idea, you know, that they they would not, if the book itself is 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 the power, or 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 the the object, then yeah, you wouldn't want to do that. I mean, uh, um, we're you know, I mean, you know, just have a Bible verse on a, a ringtone. Well, that's because we don't worship the book; we worship Jesus. Right. I suppose the I'm trying to come up with a rough equivalent. Um, and and the best I can figure out is if you would um and if you would uh say dip your um if you would like sprinkle communion wine on a phone or I mean it's like it doesn't make any sense but you know, I was, I was right. trying to there's, there's really no, it's, there's really nothing I think that would be equivalent to what would be considered sacrilegious. You know, be like a, like a, a if you could incorporate uh, um, like like communion bread, the you know the wafers into a, a cell phone case somehow. Uh, uh, but even then, I mean, for, yeah, it's it's hard to come up with something because. Yeah, this, this, you know, how he sees this as being very inappropriate. Uh, but again, what he does, obviously the people don't, because many of them, you know, they're the ones who are, you know, you know they said so they have websites and other things where they can go, you know, they advertise them, uh, where they can go to get these uh, verses for downloads. So apparently, you know, the people think it's just something really cool to do, and they see it as something much more, um, Devotional, much more uh, 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 sort of pious. Uh, pi- yeah, for them, it's a type of piety. Um, mm-hmm. You know, it's not meant to be sacrilegious in their mind. Now, now the problem I see with this because I was thinking, well, well, you know, what about a, a a Bible verse? You know, as your ringtone. Here's the problem I have with it. When with your your ringtone, you're you're always like answering it, thereby cutting it short. <laughs> So it's like you're, it's teaching you to silence the word of God. You know? Like, no, I don't want to listen to that. I want to listen to my friend instead. So I don't know. Maybe it sends the wrong message. No, you know what it needs to do? It needs you really needs to have X Y J C J N eight colon twelve. <laughs> oh yeah, then you know, then it's saying it out loud, and you know, and then. Uh, you know, people are going to come to faith just by hearing your ringtone. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You know, I'm, I'm sure they'll sure they'll figure. You know, okay, you know what that the other is because J N eight twelve. You know, uh, uh, yeah. two C R three six one C R thirteen. You know, I'm sure that would just you know really. It's like figure the, it out. It's like the people at, at football games that hold up the signs that have Bible references, but don't actually have like the verse. It just has like John three sixteen or you know or something like that, and I was wondering, do people actually go and look up those? I mean, do they think that like, oh, I'm evangelizing? Well, not really, because chances are the uh, the non Christian that you're trying to send that message to probably doesn't have a Bible that they're going to go. You know, for one, they're not going to look up the verse to begin with. For two, they don't have a Bible to begin with to look it up. <laughs> All right. I actually read an article one time by the guy who was the guy who did that. It's actually just one guy who's done most of that, and he got all these free tickets to all these games and stuff to do this. And he he said he said people contacted him and said yes, they did look it up, and it did help them come to faith. So I don't know. So I don't know. Uh, but maybe maybe to make this more effective, we could make it into a movie. Oh, there you go. <laughs> actually, probably would be more effective. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. Uh, uh, gosh, how many years ago was it? Eight, nine years ago now uh, that the, the Mel Gibson's movie uh, The Passion of the Christ came out and uh, came out right around, actually came out in February and then was, you know, kind of a big hit and then kind of took a drop. And then uh, um, during Holy Week, it really came back again, uh, beginning on 
actually, I think that thing went back to number one after it had been out for a while uh, over Good Friday, Monday, Thursday, and Easter. Because I, I, I remember taking my Sunday seat on Good Friday and, and the theater was packed. Yeah, uh, I, I remember going during Holy Week because then afterward I um, I walked into our church and, and this, I was in Iowa and, and we had this huge um, – rough hewn sort of old rugged cross um in the in the sanctuary that they put up there every lent and um and it was sort of like after right having seen that movie and then walking into the sanctuary and seeing that thing it just kind of whoa you know it was, it was pretty overwhelming um i didn't so. like the movie that's another side point but anyway so a guy by the name of bill mckay uh is uh he's a producer wants to come out with a new movie called The Resurrection of the Christ. Uh, <clears throat> and it's got a budget of $20 million bucks. Um, and uh, uh, uh guy by the name of Dan Gordon, who's written Wyatt Earp and the Hurricane, will do the, the screenplay. Um, and, uh, 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 Jonas McCord, uh, who played opposite Antonio Banderas in the movie, in the movie The Body, uh, oh no, who directed Antonio, uh, uh, Banderas in the movie The Body, uh, will direct it. Be quiet and watch the film. Sorry. So, um, so it's, this is to, you know, the, the passion really emphasized Good Friday and just sort of, um, ends the, the last few seconds in the movie you have the resurrection where it sounds like this is sort of like it's going to start out. The early part is the, um, it's going to start out with good Friday, but then it's going to lead into the resurrection and really focus on the resurrection and presumably the, um, you know, the days following. And although there's, there's enough that happens on Sunday, you could do a whole movie on Sunday. Right. Uh Um, but it says it's going to deal with uh, Pontius Pilate, Herod, Judas. So I wanted to show Judas hanging himself. Um, and his guts spewing uh, out all over. Cool. Yeah, that's what I want to see for an Easter movie. <laughs> There's that R rating again. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. It's back there again. Um, I don't know. I, I'm a little bit worried about I mean, you're spending $20 million, You're going to do, if you're going to do a decent ad campaign, you're probably talking, you know, $30 million. Uh, whereas uh, the Passion of the Christ took off, did very well. Uh, the, the 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 movie, the Nativity Story, only made it says thirty seven million. Uh, so that's not a whole lot of money to be make it for it to make. You know, yeah, although I had a lot of people say the Nativity Story really wasn't that good. Oh, I liked it. You did. Um, yeah, yeah, I. I I liked it. I mean, that was one I could actually take the family to. We, you know, we all went to it, and and uh, it was, for the most part, um, accurate. Uh, there were a few inconsistencies, but um, but you know, for the most part, it was really good. And uh, with that, and uh, I, th- I thought it really, you know, captured the the um, the story well. Um, and uh, but you know, and I'm looking at this one, and I'm thinking, well, you know. Depending on how much time they spend on the crucifixion, this might be another one that you can take the family to. And, you know, or um, afterward uh, be able to get the DVD and and rights uh, to play it in churches and, and things like that, you know. Um, so I, and, and frankly, I think that, um, like, Okay, when the Passion of the Christ movie, um, just in the the little town that uh, the little county that I was in in Iowa when that came out, the churches pitched in together and bought out the entire week of the theater so that everybody could go see it for free. And um, and then after the movie, there were volunteers standing outside um, handing out Bibles. You saw the movie. Now read the book. You know. <laughs> And uh, the and the Bibles had like the like the movie poster as the cover of the Bible, mm-hmm. and uh, and people were real excited to get those. And and then they had um, across the street there was an empty storefront that they uh, rented out, or I'm not sure how they got it, but um, 
and there was that was a place where they had like you can come and talk to somebody about it or something like that and i don't think there was i mean i think most of the traffic in there was from um from from the christians who were sort of running all of this stuff i didn't see a lot of people going in there boy i really need to talk to somebody you know or something like that but um when you've got churches buying out the whole week in a theater every, you know every seat it's it's going to make a lot of money and see i i didn't see as much of that with the with the nativity story you know people were encouraged to go see it and that but there wasn't as much excitement about it now with the resurrection I could see more excitement about that because it's back. It's the cross. It's that. It's that central hub weekend that really is the core of of Christianity. Um, I think so, that's true, and I think you know, didn't the Nativity story didn't it come out just to ride around Christmas? Yeah. I mean, you're talking about a you know what's really kind of a. I think you know what the problem is just as well as I do time anyway you know I mean they, people say you know movies are released in January and February that's where they release movies that are supposed to die <laughs> movies go to die you know January you know, not too many people you know there's just not that much released uh, you look at December how many movies get released in December they're just constant and so I think you know with everything else it's hard competition this you know uh, uh, why the passion of the Christ I don't know some reason it just I don't know that movie just caught everybody was talking about it well, I think uh -huh. that it was just because it was intended to be so authentic, even down to the language, that you really felt like you were there. Um, I mean, there was some weird stuff in it, and it it went overboard, even as brutal as it actually, as the real life event was. I think Mel Gibson went beyond that to try to make a point. Um which I don't think was necessary, but uh, I don't know. I I hope it does well, all right? And it remains to be seen. I think a lot of it's going to have to do with how much hype it actually gets. Um, you know, I mean, there's so much of that. If they can get some known name, I mean, having Mel Gibson's name attached to the Passion movie, that was huge. You know, that made a huge difference. It would not have done nearly as well if nobody knew the name of the person that was um, calling the shots. And so these names are not huge names. So, you know. Well, I, well, know. You, you, well the, the, you know, no, you don't have Steven Spielberg directing uh, or Peter Jackson. Uh, but generally, I mean, a lot of times you don't necessarily know who the, who the director is or the special the screenwriter. Uh, well, you might know. Well, I, I mean, who, who could, uh, uh, you know, who directed Sherlock Holmes? I don't know yet, Pinky. I don't remember. Yeah, see, but you know, a lot about, of... Yeah, it's about the actors in that case. Right, so, and, you know, they're, you know, dealing especially with Rob Lowe. I mean, who, who, who directed Iron Man? Oh, that one I know, but I can't. It's too late at night. <laughs> but you see, that's just that a lot of times, the, but we know Pablo started it. I mean, it's it's not that we always know who the director was. Um, and so, you know, a movie can be adequately directed by, without it being Steven Spielberg or somebody big name uh, like that. But the acting, you can you get some people, you got to get good people in there to, to do some drawing. Although, eh... Yeah, it's possible, but <sighs> now the next move, next story. Uh, 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 I think Dale wanted to go because he directed us to Fox Eight, which happens to be Cleveland, and a, this little little thing keeps going across the top saying, "Register now to be in the 2010 <laughs> Cleveland Idol auditions." So I think <laughs> we're going to see Dale there. Uh, wanting to, to, I think that's why he brought this up. He's going to, you know, this is the idea of look for me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I uh, I'm not uh, I I became a pastor specifically because I can't sing. <laughs> um, That's what he but, was to say. No, I actually I I came across this article because I 
uh, follow Fox 8 on Facebook, and so I saw it there. Um, anyway, okay, now, this is an interesting thing. Uh, since last week was the March for Life, of course, this weekend with the Super Bowl, um, next weekend the Super Bowl, the, the whole um, Tebow ad, or Tebow, I don't know how you say his last name. No, uh, the, folks on the family, isn't it? Yeah, that folks on the family's doing, and 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 you know the amount. Maybe we should do that. Cover that story next week, and the amount of uh, controversy that it's covering. But anyway, this is kind of strange. There's a a woman by the name of Samantha Burton, and um, <clears throat> she smoked cigarettes during the first six months of her pregnancy. She went to the hospital. Uh, uh um, had um, thought it was premature labor. It was a false alarm. And her doctor said she was risking a miscarriage if she didn't quit smoking immediately and stay on bed rest. In the hospital. She didn't want to do in the hospital. She didn't want to do that. And she got a uh, and the judge um, uh, uh, issued a restraining order keeping her in the hospital. And then three days later, she delivered a, a stillborn through a cesarean section. So she did miscarry. Mm-hmm. <sighs> all right so here's kind of the big debate about it all is all right people are saying well it doesn't smoking doesn't cause miscarriages it can cause other complications and stuff there's some debate about that all right but here's the here's the thing that that got me and, and the reason that i want to talk about this because According to the law. Oh, that's not right. No. This seemed very inconsistent with um, Roe v. Wade. Oh, it's extreme. Well, forget Roe v. Wade. It's it's inconsistent just with basic ideas of I have the right to refuse medical treatment. That too. You know. Um, yeah, but it is. It's 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 com- it's completely at odds with it i'm I, i'm not sure or and I, you know apparently she didn't now she was in there three days so i you know i think had she been able to appeal the decision a higher judge would have you know yeah because 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 here's the thing and, and and it just struck me that because i i saw this article on facebook and so i was following all the comments after it that it was a good you know 10 15 comments before somebody came along and said, um, she has the right to make the choice regarding this, um, you know, because, because the law is basically our government as, as the laws are currently does not recognize the um, a an unborn child as a person with equal protection under the law, All right? So because of that, now I disagree with that, okay? But that is the law as it stands now, okay? So if that's the case, this doctor forced her to do this to protect the child. But that child has no legal standing. To me, this, I mean, it, it just seemed very inconsistent with the laws. Now, you know, I'm all in favor of protecting the life of an unborn child, okay? Um, but at the same time, just the way the laws are, I was just, I was shocked that the judge would side with the doctor on this one. Well, Roe v. Wade aside, people have a right to refuse treatment. Um, right. It's unlawful my, imprisonment. You know, my, my question here, too, deals with the issue of, I mean, this, this is strange for a pro-life person to argue, but how, what is reasonable to require here? Um, I mean, she said, I want to go to another hospital. Yeah, you can't go to another hospital. I want, a do- I want another doctor's opinion. You can't get another doctor's opinion. Um, you know, because, uh, uh, you know, 
how can you, I mean, you know, make some, I mean, I, I had a friend of mine and uh, uh, her doctor told her, you know, if you, you know, if you become pregnant again in late term, you're going to have to have complete bed rest. And she just said, and she did become pregnant again. She said, I can't do complete bed rest. I've got two other children to take care of. Yeah, I can't be on my back. for. I can't stay completely in bed for three months. Now, um, we're just going to have to risk this, you know, because I can't just, you know, sit around and not take care of my other kids. Which is exactly what she said, too. She had a couple other, she's not married, she has a common law husband. Um, and uh, so, but she said, you have two other kids together. And she's like, I, I have to take care of these other kids. Um, and, uh, uh, um, those kids are driving me crazy. Well, she you know, also I said mean, that, um, she said, I was desperately hoping to receive the care I needed to save my baby. However, after a few days there, I did not feel I was receiving the care I needed. And instead of being allowed to leave or go to another hospital, I found myself being ordered by a judge to stay at Tallahassee Memorial. This is in Florida, by the way, we didn't mention that. Um, and submit to all medical care from its hospital staff, whether I agreed or not. And so since, uh, since the health care reform bill hasn't yet passed, uh, she still has the right to choose her hospital. Right. Um, and, and, and I'm generally not big on slippery slope arguments, but I kind of have to, uh, um, Agree, you know, agree with this uh, one um, uh, um, lawyer. Uh, I don't know if it's her lawyer or if it's for the ACLU. Uh, oh, the ACLU, uh, Diana Kasdan, says its ruling stands. It could lead the state virtually taking over the lives of pregnant women, including telling them what they should or should not eat and drink, what medications they must take. I mean, you know, I don't, I'm not big on slippery slope arguments, but, you know, if you're saying, okay, you're not going to stay in complete bed rest, therefore we're going to get a court order and force you to stay in the hospital, stay on the bed in the hospital, what? That's not even a slippery slope. You have to stay in this hospital, you have to stay on bed rest, and you have to receive and accept the care that this hospital gives you. Well, that's food, drink, and medication right there. Okay, right. but I mean, you know, okay, you know, I mean, here they said it was a very dire situation and didn't have time to you know, get a second opinion, yada yada yada. But okay, but what if it's not so dire? What if you know, a uh, woman goes to the doctor and and he's checking us. Are you taking your prenatal vitamins the way you're supposed to? Are you doing this way? Uh, no, I'm not. Uh, okay, well, we're going to have the court come here and enforce you. Make sure you're taking your vitamins. You know, I mean. <sighs> You know, it's the, this stuff, this, 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 this is, this, this is, this is, this is, this just gets the to be messy stuff. It's talking about some other cases. I mean, like, uh, in 2004, there was this judge in New York and he or, ordered a homeless woman not to get pregnant again, uh, cause she already lost several children due to neglect. Okay. That kind of makes sense. Uh, on the other hand, there was, uh, one in 2003 in Salt Lake, in, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, Wilkes Bar, Pennsylvania. And uh, they get the hospital there. got a court order to force a woman to have a C-section. They said her seventh baby was oversized. Uh, but unfortunately, they got it too late. She'd already left the hospital, went to another hospital, and delivered the kid naturally. Uh, the other six kids were all, all nearly 12 pounds at birth, and so was this one. Uh, but, you know, there, you know, the, you know, the hospital wasn't necessarily right in their decision. Uh, yeah. So... I don't know. I this one, the, you know how they they sometimes say hard cases make bad law. Yeah. Well, this you know this reminds me of. Do you remember the um, the McCoy septuplets? It was about what fourteen years ago, um, and they were told, "Look, there's no way that all seven of these babies are going to survive. You need to, um, we need to remove a few of them, like." two, I think they said, from your womb in order for the other ones to survive. Otherwise, you're going to lose a lot more. And um, and they said, no, we're going to leave this in God's hands. There's no way that we can um, that we can just arbitrarily kill two of our children. And um, and then they were all born and they were fine. And, you know, and they said, there, see, you know, so that's that's sort of the other end of the spectrum. 
you know. But yeah, I mean, nice kids. Where was the movie gonna do a thing? Being forced to go along with the doctor's recommendation and not even being allowed a second opinion. You know, I'm thinking there was no other obstetrician in this hospital. You know, that seems kind of unlikely. Um, but yeah, no, I, the, and that's another reason I wanted to cover this article because, uh, you know, here I'm, I'm reading this and I'm going, um, yeah, I got to side with the woman on this one, you know, um, which it feels strange to be siding with her because I'm pro-life. Um, because I think the doctor was right in his assessment of, you know, you shouldn't be smoking when you're pregnant and, and stuff like that. At the same time, he overstepped his bounds of, of what he could do. You know, it would be like me saying, look, it would, it is to your advantage to be in church every Sunday. And so I'm going to get a court order, um, to make sure that you are given that you're a member of our congregation. You know, I mean, and that's kind of an extreme, um, but it's, you know, it's analogous. So, so yeah, it, it would be, but that doesn't mean I can force you to receive that kind of care. So speaking of uh, court. Well, I can't think of a uh, court. Yeah, maybe if, if uh, we uh, go off to a uh, 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 San Francisco, where Proposition 8 is taking place, uh, this this court case is taking place on it. It's a trial over the constitutionality um, of it. Yeah, it, this is in federal court. And so this is asks if it's, you know, uh, uh, prohibited by the U.S. Constitution. Uh, I'm going to go off on a limb here, and I'm going to begin by saying I, I, I think... I won't be surprised if this uh, uh, Judge uh, Vaughn Vaughn Walker sides with the plaintiffs, considering the fact that uh, he wanted this to be televised until he was struck down by the Supreme Court. Um, He was uh, he he allowed all the religious views of the people to be put on trial. He he wanted emails uh, from the Pro uh, Prop Eight people to be released, uh, you know, and he and he was overruled by the ninth uh, uh, the Ninth Circuit on a, a number of his rulings. That's saying most, something, yeah, because uh, that's the most overruled circuit in in in, in the uh, the country, and you know, it was uh, his televising order was shot down by the Supreme Court. In a unanim- I think it was in a unanimous opinion. Um, I know Justice Kennedy was what originally put the stay in place, and uh, it was shut shut down completely a few days later. But uh, so I mean, this guy made several very strong um, rulings in favor of the plaintiffs to begin with. So it won't surprise me if he rules in their favor. Uh, I think they could actually argue, though, under appeal. That he was he was a clearly biased from the beginning. Yeah, uh, and should have. Uh, but anyway, I, I, an, an odd uh, uh, to the plaintiff's lawyer is kind of an odd couple because it's Ted Olson and David Boyce who were the ones who uh, argued in court over Bush versus Gore. <laughs> and and Ted Olson is known actually fairly conservative, but tried to make a conservative case for gay marriage, but I don't think he did. Uh, yeah, it's a pretty tough act. Right. So, um, so, uh, you know, uh, there's, all right, yes, there are, um, you know, biblical arguments against gay marriage. Okay. But you can't make those arguments in court. So, yeah, this judge shouldn't have even allowed that to be on the record. It's irrelevant. Right. Um, what matters is the arguments for or against it, and more specifically, not even whether it's a good thing or not, but what does the Constitution have to say about it? Well, right. here's the That's... thing. The Constitution doesn't say anything about it. 
Uh, well, you can, uh, depending how, what, what you might want to argue, obviously some disagree with, but, uh, there was a couple of things in here that interested me. Number one is, uh, the, somebody making the argument that, uh, the, uh, uh, <clears throat> that, that, that gays were, uh, politically a minority. I have been expecting you. F. Miller professor at Claremont McKenna College, you know, says, you know, well, you've got uh, almost all the elected officials, the labor unions, the newspapers, uh, many progressive religious groups, a lot of corporations to have domestic uh, partnerships arrangements. Um, yeah, they, 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 they are politically a pretty powerful group. Mm -hmm. um, you you know, you have log cabin Republicans, uh, you know, you, uh, uh, whatever the various uh, groups on on the Democratic side. Uh, he didn't you mean mention the Democratic anything. National Committee. <laughs> yeah, uh, he didn't mention anything about the. Um, he didn't mention anything about people in Hollywood. Yeah, you know, I'll talk about a very politically powerful group in in California, mm -hmm. uh, and they're so you know. Uh, uh, so, you know, for this one guy to argue that they don't have a meaningful level of political power is kind of struck me as kind of strange. Yeah, um, the only thing they don't have is the majority of the voters. That's right. Uh, um, so uh, uh, the other one that was interesting is that they one of these things that they, they tried is the set of the anti-gay bias is a uh, uh, a. a uh, and serve no legitimate public interest of videotape it, of a simulcast in which supporters of the band say Gary marriage would lead to polygamy and bestiality. Uh, the work of a San Diego pastor, Jim Garlow, and an unidentified pastor at this rally warned the polygamists are waiting in their wings because if a man can marry a man and a woman can marry a woman, the polygamists are going to use that exact same argument and they are probably going to win. And it's, it's interesting to me that they use this argument to say, poo poo it, oh, this is just bias, this is just a slippery slope argument, it has no bearing. I would have, I would have loved to have been there and for them to call me in because what they really should have done is called the editor of the Boston Globe, the publisher of the Boston Globe, to, to def the, the defense to, for that. Because two weeks ago in Boston Globe magazine, the front the cover article was, is Massachusetts ready for pol polyamorous relationships? Really? Yeah. So, yeah, was, I mean, it's a, well, it, it's and, an, and it begins by saying Massachusetts has now accepted gay marriage. Will it, when, when will it accept polyamorous marriage? Not even will it, but when will it? Yeah. You know, it's, oh, but it was, you know, this is going to be kind of tough for people. But it did the same thing of the, uh, you know, uh, these, look at these happy couples who are uh, happy, whatever they are. Uh, look at these happy groups and these group relationships. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. And, you know, we've, we've talked about this before um, on the show many times. Um, but all right, it comes down to this. All right. And, and I'm going to I'm going to go from from the Bible. OK, but it um, th this this applies more to the sort of civil aspect of it too. All right. The way that marriage has been understood, um, is the same as the biblical model. And that is one man, one woman married for life. Okay. Um, that's the, that's what the intent of marriage is. That is how marriage has been understood, um, by and large, um, throughout history. Okay. Um, and I say by and large, cause the, the people are sinners. And so you know, we come up with all sorts of other alternative definitions, but that has been, you know, the understanding. And, and even, um, even when it's not, you know, we even talk about alternative lifestyles. In other words, that is not normal. Okay. And I mean, normal isn't a word that I like to use a lot, but, um, that's not the normal understanding of the term. Okay, you're coming up with a new definition for that word. Okay, so um, looking at it from a Christian perspective, all right, we've already thrown out for life a long time ago. Okay, because divorce is running rampant. Okay, um, 
frankly, we've thrown out married too with all the cohabitation. All right. We've thrown out the man woman thing that you can change that formula around. So all that's left is one. If we've already thrown out the entire rest of the formula, why does anybody think that that one is going to last? Right. Well, that's just part of the, his argument. The other thing, of course, is the, uh, that they, they got upset is because they said uh, that they had this guy from um, uh, a video produced by the American Family Council in Mississippi and um, showed the chairman of the California campaign speaking against same-sex couples raising children. Uh, children need and deserve the chance to have both mother love and father love because men and women don't bring to a marriage and the family the same natural set of skills and talents. <sighs> of course, they want to counter, well, no, psychologists have said this isn't hurting kids. Okay. These are probably the same psychologists who said divorce doesn't hurt kids. They'll bounce back. Mm-hmm. And now, after a generation divorced later, we discover, guess what? It hurts kids. And these people carry the scars into their adult life. The problem is, you know, you can't make a judgment like this on, you know, short term on kids. You're going to have to see what happens when they grow up, and then you've got then then you've got an entire generation of of, of issues to deal with. Mm-hmm. At last, we meet for the first time for the last time. So and. The other thing is, once the barn door is open, it's pretty hard to get shut again. Right. So. But I find it interesting, of course, where are they going with this, with the courts? Why? Because they can't, the, you know, uh, 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 they they can't win with, they can't get through in a vote. Uh, it was interesting, actually, in this article in Massachusetts, uh, uh, one of the, you know, every, I, I don't, every once in a while I'll read some of the comments that people write, you know, and stuff, and the person said, uh, what do you mean? Uh, except, you know, Massachusetts accepts gay marriage. You won't let us vote on it. <laughs> if, you, if, you, if you actually let, the, let us vote, maybe you'll discover whether or not we actually do. Yes. Yeah. Um, because it hasn't won in any state where it was voted on yet. Wait, didn't it? Didn't up north of you? New Hampshire, it was in the legislature. Oh, it, in, uh, it wasn't a referendum. No. Uh, the, the one state where they thought they could get the referendum was uh, Maine, and it lost in Maine. Okay, yeah, you're right. So uh, that's that's an issue, you know, that's that's one of the problems they've got. It, you know, saying people are in favor of this. Well, no, they're not. It, what, what they're arguing then is basically trying to make the civil rights argument, this is discrimination, and this is, uh, you know, this is Bull Connor. Uh, sending out the dogs. This is George Wallace standing in the schoolhouse door. Uh, uh, yeah, that's 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 how they want to make the argument, but I don't think that argument holds water. Yeah, no, it's not because it's a you're redefining a term, right? That term has never in at least in the history of America and in most you know I've and I've heard about. Um, I've heard people make the argument that there was gay marriage in other cultures, but most of what I've seen when you follow up on that is that there's gay relationships, but, and and I could be wrong about this, someone by all means correct me, um, but as far as actually calling it marriage, um, that I've never seen, but you know, like I said, I may have just not actually seen that, um, but I mean, the understanding has always been this between one man and one woman. That's how it's been defined in the dictionary until recent years where they put same-sex marriage in as another definition. So, which is, what is it? It's redefining it, all right? You add another definition to the dictionary, you've just redefined the word, okay? So, um, so we're redefining it. It's not... It's. Uh, uh- Go ahead. Some want to argue that during the medieval ages, gay marriage was uh, uh, taken care of. I don't know if you ever read the the book by John Boswell uh, at Yale, who himself was a, a, a gay historian. 
Uh, and um, but the problem was is that when he found these ceremonies that dealt with same sex uh, issues, but they. You know, uh, uh, others argued, no, this was, these were not marriage things. These were uh, friendship things um, that uh, 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 that they would, you know, be these friendship covenants. You know, like uh, it's interesting because I uh, talked earlier about the movie Sherlock Holmes, and people asked whether in this movie Sherlock Holmes and Watson were supposed to be gay, or at least Holmes is because he and uh, Watson are f- close friends, and he's jealous of Watson's new group of fiance and that, that it's going to break up the relationship. And uh, I, was, I can't remember which of the two actors it was he was really upset by this. And he said, would you have asked that question of Felix Unger and Oscar? <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. Would you have asked that question of Oscar or Felix and Oscar from the odd couple? Said, you know, they, you know, there is this thing of, of two men sharing an apartment and having a close friendship, and one of them getting jealous when the other one gets married, and because it's, it's going to ruin the whole thing, with no thought of uh, you know, being gay. Well, the Lion King, the song "Can You Feel the Love Tonight," where um, Timon and Pumbaa are upset about the fact that. Um, that Simba is falling in love with Nala, and so our trio's down the tube. You know, it's gonna, they're gonna lose their friend because he's gonna go off with this girl. That's not, there's nothing you didn't, about. You didn't know the guy who did the voice of Timon argued that they were gay? A, a threesome? <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're gonna work. Yeah, no, the well, guy hey, did, it was I on, mean, if you listen to Timon's it, voice, yeah, I could see that. Um, you know, no, so it was on the uh, the uh, yeah, it was in the American Family Association Journal, and the guy who did the voice, you know, he said, "Oh yeah, I'm pretty sure you know Timon, Timon and Pumbaa are gay," and and the American Family Association, they were just you know over the top. And I'm sitting there, I said, "You know, Disney never said this. You know, yeah. he's saying this." And, uh, you know, but I, you know, I, I said, you know, that we have a, there's this, there's this tradition of, you know, we're the guys and this girl's coming in and breaking up the gang. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, unless, the little rascals. You know, Darla comes I in. I always alfalfa. wondered about Spanky and Alfalfa. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, that's a, it's a classic motif, you know. Yeah, it is, but oh well. Anyway, so uh, now here's hoping against. Oh well, my my, my feeling is, my think it thought is, is that if it made it to the Supreme Court, eventually it would be shot down by the Supreme Court. Uh, now, I don't know. Justice Kennedy was the one who uh, upheld it. You know, the struck down the sodomy laws in Texas. So it will be interesting to see, but hopefully it won't even make it that far. Yeah. We have no comments from anybody tonight. We need comments to read on the air, folks. Uh, so looking forward to anything at uh, a podcast at crossfeednews.com. Uh, you know, yeah, we're not even getting – you shut the guy down on YouTube, so we're not even getting spam anymore from the, the one guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah, if you're uh, if you're watching this on YouTube or, um, or Break or one of the other uh, – video sharing sites um by all means send a comment there post it um we're also on facebook uh if you just uh go on facebook and do a search on crossfeed uh you'll find us and uh, so you can uh, become a fan that way and and be notified of new episodes when they come out um we'd love if you would go to uh, the itunes directory and uh, post a review there so just we'd love to hear from you, our viewers and listeners. So, um, and, and, you know, and tell us we're wrong. Tell us you disagree with us. You know, if you agree, fine, great, you know, (laughs) all the better, but you know, we really, we enjoy, um, you know, hearing. And I, I should also say that if you, um, if you do post a comment, then you can, you know, the next week, watch our next episode because, you know, if you're not subscribed to us, you're not necessarily going to, we don't usually uh, post responses 
um, in the comments feed, what we do is we talk about it on the next episode. So, you know, you're watching this episode, go and, and, uh, you know, go ahead and post your comment and then go find, um, the wait a week or two and, and then go and, and check out the, the following episode and, and you'll get our comments then. Message for you, son. Um, that's all I've got for this week. So yep, thanks everybody for tuning in. Take care. God bless. Right. Right, everybody. God bless you.